I believe this one sentence has the power to change the world. I invite you to consider the possibilities. An invitation can be that spark to ignite purposeful and positive change. And today I'd like to share a story with you where I experienced this and encourage you to look for opportunities in your own life where an invitation just might be the start to a significant shift. So I don't know about you, but I'm not a fan of being told what to do. And I think that's why the idea of an invitation resonates with me so strongly. When I hear things like, you should, you can't, we can't, and my most dreaded, it's just the way it is, we've always done it this way, I literally feel a cringe inside my body. And how does it feel when we're given important information with no opportunity for discussion, no questions, it's just the way it is? How does that make us feel? maybe a little bit shut down, powerless, not exactly a positive start when you're trying to enroll someone in an idea or start a conversation towards meaningful change. Now let's consider an invitation. An invitation offers choice, possibility, and most importantly, an invitation includes others. And when we warmly welcome the thoughts, feelings, and experiences of others, then we could move from possibility to doable to yeah, this is happening. Change is happening. So my story today comes from my grade one classroom in 2014 when I had the opportunity to meet a young boy named Hayden and his grandparents, who were his new legal guardians. And working with Hayden and his family touched my heart in a, in a really profound way. And it forever changed the way I look at not only teaching and learning, but challenges. So this is a young boy who was rescued, and I do use that word purposefully, along with his two brothers, from a life that no one here wants to imagine children live, a life that no parent ever plans for their child. But due to circumstances, he and his two brothers were in need of a new safe home. So his grandparents took in all three boys and moved them across the country. So pretty big changes for this family. And I was working in a school at the time, and I had heard about this family well before I met them, because typically when a child comes to a new school, especially coming from a circumstance such as Hayden, they would have a pretty thick file, maybe some report cards, maybe some assessments, maybe even doctor notes. But due to the sudden nature of the change and going across the country, Hayden arrived with nothing, just Hayden. And so I had heard about this story, and I was walking down the hallway one day, and I heard a bit of a commotion, and I came around the corner, and I saw a little boy scrouched down, visibly very upset, crying, and a lady standing next to him very patiently, and I knew this must be Hayden. So I walked up to him, and I knelt down, and we did some blowing out of imaginary birthday candles. <sighs> do you ever do that? Just to help calm your mind and your body. And then we had a little chat while we're down there doing that. But actually, the whole time in my head, I'm thinking, okay, so what needs to happen here? Because the way we normally do it is not going to work for this child. He has a new opportunity, and we have a responsibility to make that a successful one. So in this instance, I actually invited myself into the situation by putting up my hand and saying, I will take him into my grade one classroom. Because typically, you're admitted to a school based on your age alone, date of birth, not a lot of wiggle room. And his grandmother had been advocating strongly for him to go into grade one and experience the highly social and just the really rich play-based learning that we have in a grade one classroom. So she had been at the school advocating, is there anything we can do? How can we get him into grade one? He deserves that opportunity. But we have a problem because, no, no, the way we do it is, uh, because of his age, he goes into grade two. So I meet him, put my hand up, no, no, I'll take him. But what was cool is I found myself in a conversation with a lot of different people. Myself, the, his grandmother, the school principal, someone from the district level. And we were all working towards, okay, what could we do differently? What might be possible? And we moved from possibility to reality, and thankfully he was welcomed into our grade one classroom, even though he should have been in grade two. So meet Hayden, and I 
found myself up against our next challenge quite quickly because although there had been some in and out for Hayden, it really was never stability for him. So this truly was his first school experience. So the first goal we had was going to be for him to either use or remember my name because I have many memories of maybe working with a small group of kids or writing something on the board, and I would see this flurry of excitement like rushing towards me, very unsettling, yelling, teacher, teacher! <laughs> I'd be like waving something, coming right into my space. And uh, I said, okay, we're, this is going to take some baby steps. Like, how am I going to meet his needs? But let's not forget about the 21 other five and six-year-olds I have in my room. Because when Hayden comes with no paperwork, he also comes with no additional supports. So it's, it's us and Hayden and a lot of diverse learning that we need to try to tend to. So what I did know for certain is that a lot of the way we usually do things in school were definitely not going to work in this case. In particular, I saw no room for something like a traditional report card to communicate with Hayden's parents, a checklist-type report that goes home a few times a year. That was not going to be at all effective. And it's not that Hayden didn't have a lot of learning to share. I had tons to share. He was learning something new every day. So, something that he did that just, it was, okay, this, is, this picture is one of my favorite pictures of all time. It's a bridge, yes, and the reason I love this picture is because in grade one, we have a lot of opportunity for creative play, and um, we had all these buckets with stuff. So we'd have like Lego, we'd have little pieces of paper, just buckets. And secretly, I, my goal was always to see when will the kids start really getting into it and mix up the buckets. Like, no one said you have to just take the paper and go and sit down and start gluing paper. And no one said you have to take the Lego and just sit down and play with Lego. And I was finding that it would usually take encouragement from me to get the kids to start really getting into their play. And so Hayden comes walking in, and he picks up the train, and he picks up the blocks, and he builds this bridge. And these, his classmates, I mean, they're five and they're six, like, they're mind blown right now. They're like, what? He mixed the buckets. <laughs> I'm like, yes, he mixed the buckets. And what he did, though, is he inspired his classmates and forever after, the buckets were mixed, and the communication and the creativity that flowed from that, it's like a teacher's dream. And Hayden sparked that. So how do I capture that kind of learning? Not just to share with his parents, how do I capture that so that his next teacher that he has working with him can see how he's progressed, what his strengths are, what his interests are? So I actually started with an invitation, and I invited his family into our classroom so we could have a conversation about the learning. And I did that through a digital portfolio so I could capture pictures or notes or videos and even Hayden's own voice through voice memos in the moment, like during that day. And they could have access to that right away, not just so that I could relay information to them, but so that they could join in the conversation focused on the learning. So this is an example from a digital portfolio of Hayden's. So I might do something like take a picture and then offer a suggestion of how they could continue that learning at home. And a really amazing artifact was when I recognized that he was finally open to at least even talking about what letters are, because Hayden's not reading, Hayden's not writing, Hayden's not interested in anything academic at all at this point. But when he first started to play with letters, it was on the GarageBand app, and so I shared that with his family, not just to say this is what he's doing today, but to say perhaps this would be a good way that we could start connecting him to words and reading. And then below my comment is his grandmother's comment in a conversation with me saying, yeah, you know, we're going to add karaoke onto his iPad at home and see how that might work. And that did turn out to be the spark for us to get him to start wanting to read a little bit more. So I used digital portfolios that year for my entire grade one class and not just for Hayden. For Hayden, what was really significant for me is one day through all this great communication and conversation, I realized he finally felt safe and supported and free to learn, free to be curious. 
And that day was a day when I could feel his energy behind me, but he wasn't running up to me right in my space, waving something in my face. He was waiting very patiently. And I turned around, and he calmly said, look what I made, Mrs. Fadham. And it was the first time he used my name. And, you know, it might seem like a small thing, but this was profound for this child. I could, I could recognize his success, his family could see his success, and then we could move forward. So every year from that year that I was a classroom teacher, I used digital portfolios instead of traditional report cards, pretty big leap. And today, there are thousands of classrooms across the globe where teachers are exploring new ways to bring people into the conversation ongoing about the learning and not just telling families how their child did. So here's my thinking on this. If we can, in education, go from reaching for a possibility, and education is like entrenched in policy and procedure, if we can go from that to change in motion, then I'm really excited to see what else we might shift, all of us, you. And so my invitation to you today is to look for opportunities in your life where it just doesn't feel like, right the way things have always been done. And I, I really do mean everything from the way you celebrate family holiday, ho holidays with your family or big system change. And then allow yourself to think about what could it look like? What might be possible? And I encourage you to do that without thinking about potential roadblocks, without thinking about how it might be perceived. Just take that first step. And then tap into the collective wisdom of others, because it, with, it is within our diverse perspectives and experiences that we can really create the conditions for meaningful change. So, I thank you for your time and for your energy today. Wish you a fabulous day. And I invite you to always consider the possibilities. Thank you. Thank you.